Welcome to the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for Thursday, June 27th, 729 p.m. First item, as always, is the Pledge of Allegiance. Slash everyone, please rise. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the flag of the United States of America. Uh, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As always, meetings are recorded on a video. We ask that you do our cell phones to vibrate so that we do not disrupt the flow of the meeting. Anyone interested, uh, there are masks and sanitizers on the room. Going through the first couple of items for, uh, I guess, administrative purposes. Uh, is the approval of the minutes for the May 25th, 2024 workshop meeting. Uh, I will make a motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. I by Jesse. Aye. Okay, next is the approval of minutes for May 30th, Board of Supervisors meeting. I will motion to approve. I will second it. Motion made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Harry, aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next is the special on lot meeting that was held on June 20th. I'll motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion made by Peter, second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene, aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I did not see the June 22nd meeting. Yeah, not done. Okay, good. Uh, Irene, do you have anything for the treasury? Um, I have four questions. So, the New York State Special Time Committee meeting for June 22nd. Uh, Irene, do you have anything for the treasury? That's okay. My question is, do you want me to do that as part of the report that we put on the table? Um, I, it's, it's so lengthy. Um, it's, it's too lengthy. Let me, look at it. let me see if there's a way that we can give it sort of an executive summary. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, and I'll, I'll try to do that every team every month. Other than that, I think really unusual to report. Um, we have our audit uh, up for weeks, our general audit. So I think, uh, as far as I'm concerned, my paper looks a little tiny, but we'll get through it like we always do. Yeah. We do have to, our contract is up with the firm. I've sent a couple of emails. I don't think we've received any response. So we'll get Hard to find a municipal auditor, um, but I want to continue to search for uh, for agency see if we can get multiple. I don't want to see bids, but um, offers to see where they're at. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the bills. Take any bills for June twenty twenty four. I'll second that. Motion made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. At this time, anybody that is uh, wishing to address the Board of Supervisors, we ask you to come up to the podium, clearly state your name and address for the record, and then you sign in on the sheets if we have it the record as well. We do ask that you eat and speak real loud and clear. I'll have a hard time getting yourself up when we're doing a minute. Yeah, so. the, the air conditioner yeah. doesn't help. Yeah. Yeah. Just not have a stand for a or you want to keep it on. It's whatever your comfort level is. I was going to say, is it going to be blistering the hot off? Yeah. Okay, leave it on that. We'll talk about it. Uh, Beverly Rossman, Ford Paul, Water Street, Strasburg, PA. Um, my first question is, is Shed Deck out here? Does that belong to the township or does that belong to the MCT? Uh, that's the MTCA, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, all right, and uh, I was addressing to find out how and when I can step forward with painting, and who's going to help me get or show me how to do this. So, which painting, like the, the equipment or just the shed, or what, what's no, the, the, the paint on equipment? Uh, I have three things I'd like to start with. Well, we would like to start with um, is the bicycle rack. The little um, Jeep, yes, that's a little Jeep, yeah. and the lining for the castle. So I could give a short answer to that. Yeah. At the workshop meeting, we had discussed playground maintenance. We still have to review some information before we could give you an answer. 
As soon as we have that information, we'll let you know. And what information? What we need to do to properly maintenance the equipment that we need. It's not just a, here's the thing that goes to it. There's other aspects to it. So, one, one of the aspects is yeah. using the right kind of paint to just kind of tip off or you have people. Oh, right. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll be looking at that along with some other maintenance items and we'll let you know right away. So, yeah. yeah. The, the boys were asking about that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Now, please. It, yeah, before you start, I just want to let you know that I that the township sent a letter to that bar. So please let me know if music has not been so, They're so glad to move as well. All right, well, let's go. Well, as I as I explained last meeting, the township technically doesn't have jurisdiction over that issue. It resides with the PLC, the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Enforcement. So I would strongly encourage you to contact PLC and a Pennsylvania State, State Police Officer. You know, this is the property when you tell them to visit this house. As long as they stop, I don't care. I want to say outside. I just don't want to hear. I, I will. Oh, so, oh, so, oh, so oh. as I as I also said last meeting, they they they're they're not super enthusiastic about enforcing that issue, but they do occasionally issue citations for it. So, to the extent that you give them a call, make a visit, doesn't stop, and you keep calling two, three, four times, they will get a citation. And that, and that does and that does matter because if they get too many citations. And their liquor license can be taken away. So again, we can't unfortunately we can't do anything, but I would strongly encourage you to call PMC. It's smart enough to quit. Okay, well, play that music, shut the damn door. Right, right, sure. Yeah. Uh I want to bring it up by the fourth of July. Right. Too many people in town that have to take power plate awards and like the crazy. We so, have a big feel of so yeah, this we, is another. This is actually. Uh, it's funny. It's funny you raise this issue because this is another issue where the township actually doesn't have jurisdiction. The, there, there are state laws preempting the superseding township regulation of fireworks. All we have the ability to do, and I'm pulling from memory here, I think is prohibit the launching of fireworks. I think it's within 150 feet of an occupied building. So. Uh, the, 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 our, our police department has has the authority to enforce the state regs, state law on that issue, but it's not like we can we can enact an ordinance um, that's strictly so against the legal ordinance. Say, yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem. You want to pay a lot of money out of the What you say is we can't. There is a state law that would supersede anything we tried to do locally here that dictates. That particular thing. But if they're writing a fire club in the public park. But if, if, if again, I think I'm, I'm, pulling, I'm pulling from memory because it's been a while since I've done this research, but I believe the state law says that you cannot sell a firework within 150 feet of the building. Okay, so, so, to, so, so to the extent someone is setting off a firework within 150 feet of the building, call the police department to enforce the state law. Yeah, there's also state laws about not drinking alcohol and saying, Fireworks. There's also state laws against certain signings of fireworks as well. So, so they say about like industrial grade stuff that you can absolutely call the police. There's nothing that you can do as a board, but there are criminal things that can be done. Yeah, I like the fireworks. I like the fireworks. Yeah, yeah somebody gets here, only way for somebody to get hurt, somebody turned into an obstacle. I hear, I hear you, Alan, but uh, there's, there's nothing that we can do as an ordinance to. to Address what you're trying to address. The, the only remedy that you have is call the police when you see it happen. Well, you want to do is come down inside for a no, knowing is half the battle, Alan. You see it, all let them know. Uh, I got a question about the drone. Where does this drone get? My house. Why? Because John's the only pilot. Huh? John is the only one certified to fly it. Why is why is it kept there in the township? Because he, John was the only person certified to fly it. But if you want to fly, you come up here and get it, and 
drive a lot. So if there's an emergency and then he has to come back to the building, he does not have access to the building in hours the building isn't open. So he would have to contact one of us, come to the building, get the drop, and then go to where he's at. So, you know, he's the only one that's certified to use it. For years, we never had it. Yes, that's that right. out. You have concerns about if it's being flown or not flown or anything, put in a right to no request. We happily supply the black box, uh, black box logs to you for that. I think it should be kept right here. But it's not that you, you don't live too far from here. No, but the thing is, emergencies happen at 2 o'clock in the morning, 2 in the afternoon, and any time of day. So if John has it with him, then he takes it and he goes to the event. If I have, if I'm not home with him, I uh, we have to get hold of someone else who can come down to the building to open up the building. If he's, if he's responsible, and then you grab a key and he come up here and get. That's simple enough. So, okay, so I, I can put your comment out yeah. and we'll take Thank it you. under advisement. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, anything else? Else? Uh, You guys go. Okay. Go ahead. Yes, no, I'm going to stand up. Hi, Mary Ann Venus here for 157 Main Street. Um, I just want to follow up with the Seiko Bar. You know, probably the more phone calls the PLC gets right now, the better, because there is that change of ownership in the window. Yeah, the, that place is transfers in the window. So can you, can, you me, can you tell me who's who wants to own it? I no. You know, I was gonna stop last week. And when is that put? Do you know when that was posted? I it's it's been up there at least three weeks. The orange change of ownership, you know. Did we, did we get notified? I, I, mean, I didn't see. Did you drive up and read it? I didn't, but I also take a picture so, tonight. Yeah, because I'm not too sure. Um, but it's, it's definitely, you know, I have a liquor license here in town, and it's definitely change of ownership. I would have thought that perhaps would notice that when they. Well, it depends on what it was posted. If it's posted after the route. Oh, orange. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that's for changing orange. Not, that's not, yeah, anyway, yeah, but whatever. Back, back. Last week, there were two ambulances there with the back doors open. Yeah. I don't you know that. Okay. Um, but anyway, probably the more people who call, even if you don't hear the music, the better. Yes. There's that old adage about the sweet wheel thing. Yes. Yes. That's a good Yeah. Um, what? Yeah. 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 I can hear it. No. Oh, uh, you know what? I, I can tell you about that orange placard, right? That orange placard is, is not a change of moment yet. Oh. Because if because if if it was a change of ownership, I would the, the LCD portal would show pending application. Okay, that they're trying to get the deck license. So no, they're trying to expand their yeah, gotcha. they're trying to expand their premises. Um, gotcha. We, we're we're taking action, is, well, yeah. we're taking action against that deck. Well, I remember you were going to yeah they didn't get the permit. Stop work order at that. Um, no worries. Thank you for bringing it up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, seeing no additional public comments at this time, Lisa, I will pull a attendance report from the Zoom for you after the fact because there were quite a few people um, that we can put into the meeting minutes. Okay. Uh, okay. So, general announcements. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please be sure to get your septic system pumped out and stay protected. You have a list of registered pumpers available on request, and it's very easy if you do have a preferred pumper that is not on that list. Uh, it's a pretty short and simple process to get them ready. Uh, the ed educational meeting was held at the township building. We had a pretty good turnout. I believe you guys said it was about 35 people that showed up. Um, so very good there. And uh, we are still accepting letters of support around getting grants, especially as it relates to the ongoing Act 537 saga. Moving into the main items for the discussion, the first item is the Act 537. Uh, we are still uh, starting to progress against that special study that was submitted and accepted by the DEP. Um, the project will, per their requirements, uh, need a water quality management permit for the 
construction when we get to that point, as well as the operation of said sewage facilities. Uh, it also uh, does not entail, uh, say, an implied or guaranteed approval on anything else in the project. We would still have to file things for approvals on designs and everything else as we start to move through that. But once again, we're in sort of that, that middle area where we need to seek money for grants. Um, it, is, it is not time to, to try to challenge that. We're, we're not in a space where we can stand on our two legs. Um, you have questions? I think the plan is five years. It's, it's the, the construction five, five or ten years. Five, it was seven. Five, ten. I would say I don't want to say five to eight. It's what the timetable is. So be, all 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 that all when it's essentially all done. But there's a long road between here and there. Um, so, as I mentioned before, I'm not going to go into the, the whole internal strategy of it. But there are times where if you are dissatisfied with something, that you have the right avenue, the right channel or mechanism to challenge something. We are not at that juncture right now. We challenge it right now, it will end up. Oh, no. So yeah. we, have to, we have to do what we have to do. We have to comply. We have to demonstrate good faith. We have to bide our time until we do have the right opportunity to, to protest something if that comes up. So um, we're going to continue to do what we're doing. We're going to continue to work with Hyperterra on trying to get grants for everything and anything we possibly can, but it is going to be a still long and arduous journey between now and whatever happens. So, segueing into item number two, the sewage management program, uh, C2C was out doing some surveying at the beginning of May, um, and we did have that follow up meeting uh, on the 20th, as I mentioned previously. Uh, item number three, is the proposed new building. Um, this was uh, a proposal given to us by the Olson Design Studio uh, along with the plan. The COVID-19 ARPA grant application for Senator Casey's discretionary funding uh, has been submitted. The motion that we needed was made to approve the plan for that. And uh, we just have to wait to hear back. Uh, we are going to be meeting with Senator Fetterman's office on Tuesday, July 2nd. And uh, Irene was here to meet with Madison, who is a representative for our state rep, uh, Musser, on June 25th. Um, and Irene, I'll actually if you give, a, give a quick synopsis on how uh, that was. In this, she's here for a little bit, over an hour. Um, she was very surprised at the condition of the building, how poor it is especially upstairs, um, uh, she did look of shock on her face was mild in describing it. She's concerned for our safety and the structural safety of the building. So she is going to reach out to some agencies and have them take a look at the building to see if it's still safe for habitation. So we're waiting to hear back from her at this point. Um, yeah, she said this is the worst building she's ever been to. Hopefully that translates to uh, high marks on the grant application. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So going into the next item, the future planning. Um, I have some stuff scrawled out. I need to get it kind of lined up. We need to compare notes, but the intent here would be like we can talk about or to develop a five or ten year plan of what we want to try to accomplish in the three areas that I had outlined. If there's an additional area that we can always change it. It's a not set in stone sort of thing, but um, beautification of the township, efficiency and capability. So making things look and, and behave nicer for people in the township, making something we already do better, we're adding something that we can do to the, the roster of what we got service twice. Um, I've got a couple of cool things scrolled down, but I think this is going to be a workshop session, patch out notes and then talk about them. Saying, hey, not really explain. Next is the proposed long-term rental inspection ordinance and fee schedule. Uh, Mr. Farland recommends that this map uh, as closely as possible to our, our short-term uh, rental inspection ordinance for ease of enforcement. Um, Kraft has asked to take a look at it, and as, as, as of this moment, I'm still under the impression that they are actively doing so. Yeah, I, I, I have no lost the items, but I, oh. I, I will get to them. Okay. Yeah. No worries. 
Uh, next is the 4050 Conrad Wiser Parkway. Um, where do we want to start that one? Um, we, we really don't have much to say. Um, it's pretty obvious that they built the deck. I was done without the proper permits. Craft has issued a notice of violation and tends to issue a demolition, demolition notice because they obviously can't confirm structural validity since they can't access footage, which I understand don't exist. Yeah. So uh, I guarantee you the township code enforcement will be issuing a demolition notice for something similar. Okay. I get a question for uh, an addition to that. Oh, okay. Come up to the podium up. Okay. I know you're asking for four water street. Uh, I just took notice, I'm on my home from work today, that their siding would they have a permit to do that too. So this this depends. So siding, yeah. If it's, if it's a certain percentage of the building, it's just normal repair. You don't have a permit for it. But if you're like residing the entire building, it's a huge. Yeah. I, I would guarantee that they don't have a permit, whether they need a permit. Yeah, sign si si doesn't need doesn't need. Uh, maybe that changed because, like, when I did my house a couple years ago, I had to get from for because I redid like all of it. It also, yeah, if you well, do sort of one of the years, you notice it and whatever was the one you said, okay, so it's probably for, 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 for repair of siding, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe for replacement, total install and replacement, yeah, because I know, like, with roof work, like roof work, for example, if you're replacing under 20% of the decking, it's considered. Remedial and it's not part of it. But if you're just if you're doing more than 20% of the decade, you mm -hmm. have to get a permit. So but if they're aware of it and they haven't done anything with it, it's probably within that that threshold. So it's yes, going the inspection of the roofing. Yeah. They inspect the plywood. Yeah, it's not the shingles. The shingles are not. Um, you never have a sign of inspection. Okay. All, all I know is it's the roofing, electric, insulation, yeah. plumbing. No one's ever inspected site. Yeah. Just, just saying what my understanding is. Whether that's happening every day, I can't say. But uh, usually there is some sort of cut off there. And whether it's kind of a law situation where it might be there or no law, of course, again, when you get a certain over a certain percentage of the then you figure out something and have to inspect the bottom of the same down property. Yes. If you're just doing the bottom floor, then you don't want to inspect the bottom floor. You don't want to inspect the bottom floor. You don't want to inspect the bottom floor. Same as when you build an inspection, you don't want to make the bottom floor. You don't want to inspect the bottom floor. Yep. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, if we don't have anything further on that, and I'm sure we will for next month, uh, we'll move on to item number seven, which is the Western First Joint Zoning Ordinance. Section 403, uh, amendment about the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm, uh, farm animals. Uh, we finally are having the hearing. It only took like two years to get here. But uh, on July 18th at 7 p.m. at the Heidelberg Township Building, there will be a, a public hearing around the change of that zoning uh, for our township. Farm is needed. So Jesse and I guarantee we'll be there. Irene, uh, please be there just in case one of us yes, has a horrible issue. And Lisa, you will need to be there as well. Um, you'll need to bring the seals on too. Okay. Uh, property maintenance. Uh, we have that issue at 660 Canal Road, which is owned by ATT. Uh, residents at 663 and 664 Canal Road uh, requested to demolish the shed themselves at no cost to the township. The board has agreed to that. Uh, and we will need to ratify that. So we'll make a motion to do so in just a second. Um, the other record was that? The, the permit came back today and uh, at an amount of $300.50. Okay. That was yes. in. Okay, uh, I, I just had to say that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the other recommendation was that because they're doing this uh, and saving the town to be similar to the tenants on the act of demolition and cleanup, that we waive fee associated with that permit. So I'll I'll make two motions, Lisa. The first one is to ratify the acceptance of the property owners at 663 and 664 uh, to demolish the AT&T owned shed at 660 Canal Road. Second. Motion made by Peter, second by Arlene. 
Roll call, Peter. Aye. I mean, aye. That's it. Aye. Um, did you want to get a word in that question? No, I, I, I Okay. Second motion is to waive the fee associated with that demolition permit of $304.50. Second. Second. Motion made by Peter. Second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, we will be tabling items nine and ten. Uh, we later discussed at a special meeting around the issues uh, present within Stonecroft. Uh, so moving on to item number eleven, uh, we are working on getting a complaint form and proper protocol in place in advance of the next snowing season. Uh, we will be discussing this with the attorney to make sure that we have a, a good, uh, legally responsible and viable complaint form and a good process in place to be able to take action on it. Put a fine point on that, this is a, a mechanism. So if somebody has a situation where plow has damaged their yard or bumped a mailbox or whatever, we have a way of taking that in, processing it, and then taking the corrective action. Made. Good example of that is with Al. Plow whacked his uh, yard in the back. I had no idea. I don't think anybody had an idea until Al came forward and said, hey, plow hit my lawn. He fixed it. I know he fixed it, but we don't know. So we need, other than just having somebody come to a meeting, we need some I way. I, I, I know you did. I'm saying we want to we want to institute this so that it's a little more a little more formalized in the future. So uh, got a lot of parents up there when I say something, you know, like you fixed it, yeah. write it down. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all it's gonna go. Yeah. Uh, general complaint form. So do we we need to have two? I think forms? we need to have one specific to this, and I'll, I'll defer to Colin on this, but because of some of the um, liability that would associate itself to that, we need to make sure that that's spelled out very, very clearly and very plain. Okay. Uh, road maintenance. Uh, we are working on revising the five-year plan in hopes of finding a sweet spot of being able to target some of the, say, more needy roads that we are able to fit within the budget and shift that around a little bit in the honest hopes of getting us to the point of being able to get onto that rotation of general repair rather than uh, firefighting for the next three to five years. That's something that we will need to talk about at further length. Again, that would be a good workshop item. Um, one of the first things that we need to, to get cataloged, and I know Butch has done some preliminary work, is the safe culverts. Um, those three culverts in not last year, but the year before that, um, those three culverts going kind of took everybody by surprise because we didn't know that they were in the state of Italy. So we want to make sure that we, we know the state of things, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, document it, and then we can start the plan. Yeah, and just as an aside, uh, if we know which roads that we think we're going to do next, it's having the information plans in place. There may not necessarily be grants, but there may be opportunities for funding. So again, if we're just shy of shovel ready, then we can move forward. And with unfortunate events within the past year, there may be some more infrastructure opportunities that come to, that come down the pipe that we'd be able to grab at if we have the plans in place. Yes. So I think it's prudent to. Um, spend a little bit of money up front, get everything documented, say this is in our priority, and then if something pops up, we're able to move forward, send the bids out, et cetera. We have everything ready to go. To add to that, it's not like it's additional spend. We would have to get to yeah, anyway. ready. Yeah. We have the yeah. money that does work potentially for getting grant money. Yeah, um, I, I think it's very important to uh, start playing it. Yeah. Which, Sheridan Road this year? Uh, yes, sir. Sheridan Road South. Yes. So I I drive now, probably that's the road that I drive the most. It's terrible. But it's not going to be cheap to do. Most of that road is graded long. Like uh, I'll use the, uh, the area that's near me and Mervyn uh, there. The road slopes the wrong way. Which means that whole section has to get dug out, regraded, and repaid. And that is a very expensive prospect. And you can't just move on chip to get hot. Yes. We, we could, but it would just deteriorate right away in those spots because, again, the road goes like this. And when it rains, it puddles. When it snows and ice it freezes there, and it just yanks the road out. It is. Yes. It is. Aside from that, there's a culvert along 
you know, right by right. Your right. That's a big problem too. So I know John's been keeping an eye on that. Um, and I'm sure he wants to have a discussion with you about that particular pool very well. Um, I actually, yeah. um, not with Mike, but with Chuck, I had asked him about that because that was one that I, yeah. had, I had put in because of, I see it all the time. It's a terrible shape. Yeah. Um, the problem with that is our options are pretty limited because it's a very wide screen bank and it's a very, very low height. Um, when we had talked to DCCD, their suggestion that we completely dismissed was uh, they wanted to take like 40 feet on either side of the screen of basically Urban's property and do riparian bar. So it was a huge thing when we talked about it. Uh, but we should revisit that. I believe there is a design that exists that would be uh, grant ready. One, uh, I think it was a solid concrete box hole. That it was essentially you drove on top of the box. Um, it's been a couple of years since I looked at that, but again, that was that was a costly project. It's almost hundred thousand dollars to do that. So, um, talk to John as well because I want to say he had mentioned something about floodplain management yes. in that aspect. So it may open up a different door with funding it, it and other opportunities. I think so, if it's mentioned in a flood, that would be yeah. the nicest thing that happened to us. Yeah, because we have yeah, to look exactly. at exactly. Um, um, but the gift of the ball shouldn't be taxed, he's out of time, so um, yeah, so I'll, I'll use that to actually segue to the next point, which is yeah, just going back to what you were discussing before. So, we would, in, in essence, canal is horrible, yeah. so, so let's you know, we're gonna have we're gonna pick a couple rows, we're gonna have a plan in place, and then we could. Say okay, this is how we have. This is the maintenance schedule. Like we need to start putting those plans into into effect, essentially. So, because believe me, Jen, I know. Well, there are sections of that road that are hot road, but oh, I have to it, get that right. yeah. If if we were to put stuff on it, there's not enough road there for it to yeah. really stick to it. It would just come up right yeah. away. So you yeah. basically have the option of digging it out or we. Yeah. The previous concern when it came to the sewer. Isn't as much a concern now because of yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. So, so yeah, that's yeah. actually a good point. So, if, if we do go the low pressure system rather than gravity, you're not digging a huge long trench, you're cutting a hole and straight boring from one, one piece to the other, so you don't have to disturb the roadway. That was one of the other yeah. driving factors for myself. And I know previous people that were on board is we don't want to go and spend a ton of money to do this and then have to dig a 20 foot deep hole in the road the entire length. So the dynamic is a little different now, and that's why we're revising that three to five year plan for the roads. Yeah. What did you want to do? You wanted to say something? Uh, now I wrote on Salzburg. So. Yeah. Uh, there, there, that one. Yeah. And, yeah, the one that is. My authorized group. I would not put millions there. If you're going to do anything, what I would do is sweep it out and try getting a whole patch tamped into there, a little bit of a raise on that side. Because again, that's another one. The reason it's so bad there is the water is allowed to flow. Yeah. Oh, so until you, until you address that in some capacity, anything you do there, whether it's millings or old patch, all you're going to do is you're going to create a slightly smaller pond that's now full of dirt. That's it. That's the only thing that's going to be accomplished with that. So let's let's look at it. But I I don't have a problem with if we can do it in a way that isn't going to immediately backfire on us. Putting some patches and spots to try to even things out. But at this point, we're putting good effort out. The, the roads and then I'll be as long as I can here are, are really screwed there. There's Taking out entirely, there is no safety. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, anything you guys want to say about the no. Of the winter still over. Okay, so we just, yes. Like down here for Bob Yeah. Okay. Can we get a hold of a grinder and grind up freaking road out? And it's going to be a little rough, but he should be a lot smoother than what it is now. So grinding just the, the top wear force off presents a number of different issues. So if we get rid of the wear force or part of the wear force, you're going to see factor deterioration you already see. Believe it or not, having that there, and I'll maybe defer to the engineer on this, but taking more asphalt away is not the solution. You take more away, 
more water is going to get in into the road base and it's going to break I'll, down. I'll agree with that. I've seen it so bad in the fact that once you get the top off, are you familiar with uh, the term pumping? All right, so if you have soil that is super saturated, it, it'll, it's called pumping. You can actually step on it. It's like stepping on a water mattress. It looks, it looks like a water mattress. If you get below the asphalt level and it's, it's saturated, as you see, as it appears to be, you're likely to run into that. So I would not, I would tear it out. Yeah. A, a lot of the things that we are either doing or not doing, believe it or not, have some drivers behind it. It's not just a, a knee jerk situation where you make a decision on the fly. There are either engineering or legal things that feed into that. So believe me, we want to do the roads, but we have a limited amount of funding in which to do the roads. So we have to pick that very carefully, and then we have to pick projects to be able to pair. That we believe are going to be good uh, candidates for getting grant funding. Don't, don't we get money from the state? Oh, we get a little bit of money from the state. Like, huh? like, like what fuels turn back? The total turn back allocation, I think we get $150,000 a year, roughly. And which is not even enough to do a quarter mile. To do a poll. It, it, it seems like a lot of money. I guess. I'm like, I take all the McAdam walk and put it back in the <laughs> I don't know if we can. And you don't have to fix nothing. Yeah, we'll go back to your friends. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, Wintersville Road, uh, the culvert there located at 3820 Wintersville Road. We authorized this in February through a motion. Uh, and if we needed to make a motion tonight to accept the design and advertise the bid, assuming the design is completed. Yeah, it's it's uh I sent off the, the plans, the preliminary plans. Uh we would need to do a few more things to make sure it's bid ready. Uh but we wanted to look at three different options. Um that we uh, I wouldn't get a chance to look at those. I, just, I did not get a chance. Okay. Yeah, so we had three different options um and mm -hmm. I've got them. No, it's it's okay. We'll talk about them now and we'll we'll go from there based on yeah, so the, the three options are you can take the two culverts that are currently there and line them. That disturbs no ground, doesn't you don't have to repay, you're not trenching or anything. That's going to be your cheapest option. We put together uh, opinion of probable cost that came to about nineteen thousand yeah. uh, dollars. The second option would be to uh, replace those two uh, culverts, which you're going to then. Have to Engine. Oh, that 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 cost came up a little bit higher. I don't know that part of right now, but moving the plans. Um, and then the third option uh, beyond the big enough, it would yeah, be beyond, beyond. The third option would be to eliminate the smaller culvert pipe across the driveway there on your uh to the larger culvert across. I don't like that option. Really, it's one we are going to see. I think lining it is the most cost effective option. Ultimately, you're not going to solve flooding, but you'll make the situation better. Sure. Uh, I know where that is, too. There, there is some flooding. Okay. Well, that's, that's good. That's, that's good. So, if it's a situation where we have a yeah. culvert that's deteriorating and we don't have any other structural deficiencies with it and it's not a flooding concern, I think lining is the the best option. They say lining one of these. Um, the lining. So I'll, I'll refer to the engineer, but I would assume it's they're sticking something in on the inside to be the new surface of the culvert, replacing the one that's there without actually extracting it. Um, yeah. Might be. yeah, so basically what they do is they clear out what's in there and they take and they use uh, it's, it's a polyethylene something. It's, it's soft when it goes in and then they either use refrigeration to uh, harden it or it can be like, uh, and it, it becomes like an HDD pipe. Uh, but they, they put it inside the pipe so that you're utilizing the, the shape of what's there and creating a pipe inside it. It's the least basic, most cost effective. I, I apologize, the numbers that I gave you for the cost of the raw, but, uh, the construction cost is 19.5, but with contingency, we put 27,000 approximately. Uh, if you were to do a full replacement, you're looking at about seventy thousand. So it's a it's a significant difference for minutes. There's always water running through that tile. There's never no flood. So, so 
Based on that, I will make a motion to uh, authorize the advertisement and bidding of the plan upon completion by the engineer for the um, lighting option for the over at 3820 Winters Over. Second. Motion made by Peter, seconded by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene, one time. Aye. Um, Michael Sackman, um, can we use liquid fuel? That's, that's we, have we received approval to use liquid fuels? We have not. I would say, I will, once we get the spec put together, okay. I will reach out to Charlie Harris okay. to uh, get that. Okay. Next item is. Uh, the road projects and uh, Lisa for next month's agenda, could we actually do sort of 15, 16, um, 17 being separate items? Could we kind of nest them all under 15? So it's the 2024 road projects sure. and then listing all. Thank you. Sure. Um, first item within that category is the Sheridan Road South. Uh, this is a drainage and pavement improvement. Uh, we made a motion at last month's meeting to advertise the drainage of roadway improvements and uh, the design for it had been completed. I believe we actually are right opening up the bids. Yes, so the bids have been opened. Uh, we received two bids that were proper bids. We received a third bid after the submission deadlines. We have to reject that bid. We only get to open it up. It doesn't matter what the price was. It came in daily. Uh, but for the first two bids, uh, m a Excavating came in at the low bidder at $70,087, and Construction Master Services came in at $96,945. Okay. okay, could you repeat the, uh, the M&A again for me? Uh, yeah, m a is $70,087. It's on your good. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, no, so, okay. and and that, 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 that is with the alternate okay. included with the base bid, it's 68987 Okay. So it's a, it's a difference of $1,100. Yeah. Okay, Colin, is there anything that we need to do prior to accepting the bid? No, my only question would be why, why does the engineer believe that there was such a significant price to certain discrepancy? It, it's not uncommon, especially somebody like Instructor Masters. If they're busy right now, they're just going to throw a bid out just to see if anybody else bids. That's why you should get our bids in early. We, we started this in like January. So, <laughs> so at, at, the, at, this, at this point, I'd recommend that. A, that the board made um, what motion of intent to award contract? Motion, motion of intent to award the contract to um, MA excavating on the condition that they conform with all of the requirements set forth in the RFP. Now the question becomes, do you want to go with the base bid or the alternate? The alternate is, is blue of a dog's house inlet, uh, install a two by four standard type inlet with an M top and saw cutting to replace the existing 18 inch RCP pipe. Do you want to go with that or base bid? My recommendation for the difference in cost yeah. would be to go with the alternate. Okay. I was actually just about to ask based on Understanding of the project. Just, just amend that motion to, to include all, all the contract. Motion for intent to award the alternate contract on the condition that all of the specifications, the conditions are satisfied. Including but not only to bonds and certificates. Mike, can you? Get me all the numbers of projects that we are currently having in motion that we've said yes, we're going forward. So I'm a little bit concerned. We, have, we only have the right, Sheridan Road, Road, Sheridan Road, Sheridan Road, Sheridan Road Marion Drive, Marion Drive, and Diamonds. So I need some idea of the numbers yeah. because I don't want to break the bank yep. essentially um, because we have a finite amount of money. So, and then at next month's meeting, yeah. we'll have 
Assuming, assuming MNA complies with all the requirements of the RFK, plus they're out of problems. Oh, actually, for, for point of specificity, that one is married to Brian, right? We're not, that one, because the, the numbers that I have are in the extension of the stormwater pipe. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, so yeah. do we have the numbers back from Sheridan? Sheridan, I'm Sheridan South? Right. Sheridan South, no. Okay. No. Okay, so then functionally, we only have two things. Okay. On the table in terms of cost, the first one is that MA one, which was the 70,000, and then the guide rails was uh low end. We'll, we'll cover that in a second. Was the 16,588. And plus, we will have Sheridan. We will have Sheridan in the next few months. Okay. In Wall Park, we will be talking all over 100,000 stuff. Probably in the neighborhood of 300,000. Um, actually, we had we had previous price rate yeah, on that. Um, I want to say it was I think it was three hundred and. I, 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 so I can I can look back my my old notes that I have. I think yeah, right, but I think it was somewhere in the mid three hundreds. Right, I will say. Yeah. So. <laughs> Sorry. I there's just like so much. No, that's okay. Numbers I to, yeah, I so. want to make sure I'm, um, I'm just noted wrong. Yeah, I but. just want to make sure because uh, I don't want to be seen to have the same thing. Yep. Then we're in Are those uh, extra toll? Uh, I'm supposed to be in that shared mode. I'll go. I, I don't think any of those pipes are the right size. Yeah, yeah. back there. No, no, no. I mean, the five said chocolate all about putting eggs in. Are they going to put those? I don't recall. No, I'm pretty sure what went out to bid is the one, the one side of the pickups. And if we still have a problem, the way it was put together is we could sub out additional uh, pickups on either side of the room. So this is the, this is the main part of it to see if this is addressing the issue that, that exists in the school center. Um, okay, uh, guide rails. So we'll make a jump to guide rails. The guide rails uh, were put out to bid, and we received five bids, uh, ranging from $16,580 to $19,760. So, like, one correction there that, that doesn't include the entry. The, the total base bid is between $17,128 for William Penn to uh, $26,000, and then for Hickory Road, it was between $3,090 and $10,900. So the low bidder was William Warren Sons for both of those roads. Uh, the total for both bids uh, would be $20,218. We're going to go back a step because I forgot to make a motion on the other one. Right. For uh, maybe I got kind of sidetracked on that. Um, okay, so stop me if I say something wrong, but I'll make a motion uh, to award or a motion of intent to award the alternate contract to MA excavating on the condition of all the requirements set for the RFP, including but not limited to bonds, insurances, other requirements for the extension of the stormwater pipe on Marion Drive. Perfect. No, second that. Who's that? Second. Motion made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. I hope I made it. Hold up. What do you say? Immaterial to the motion? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Continue, please. Okay. Roll call, Peter. Hi. I mean, hi, Jesse. Hi. Okay. Mike, did you want to say something? Or is it sidebar? Sidebar. Okay. So, so is that total on the guide rails? The, the guide rail, we haven't done it. Oh, the the 70,000 yes. 87. And then what was the, the other? Total for the guide rails, let's do it in just a second, is 20,218. Before you make a motion to have an intent to award, you want to make a motion to ratify the application of that. Okay. okay. Uh, for for, 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 for Jared? Yes. Okay. Um, Okay, um, I'll make a motion to ratify the the, adver the advertisement. Sorry. The advertisement of the RFP for Road South. And I'll second. Okay, Jesse. Aye. Jesse. Aye. 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 Aye.
Motion made by Peter, second by Jesse. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Going back to the uh, February meeting. Yeah. The February meeting, Sheridan Road was 326. 326. Okay. okay. So, so, so I, I, I just, again, you guys trusting out the numbers. We're, we're well looking with some the account currently. Yeah. I know when we first started yeah. talking about this, we wouldn't put part of because we no. had kind of all right, 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 right. Um, So as long as they weren't like astronomically different, which we should be good. Right. Okay. Just constantly, you know. No, right. it's, it's a good yeah. thing to worry about. But yeah. You, you should be good on that. Yeah. I'm not sweating too profusely yeah. about that. Um, based on the fact that they kind of conform to most of yeah. the they're, 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 I mean, in some ways, it's nice because, uh, say, if we wait three, four years, money accumulates in account. We're able to do these larger projects. Straight off, we have to wait and buy our time. Wait. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So moving on to the, the last item in that group of things, the guy rails. Um, so what was the name of the lowest bidder? William Orr and Sons. Okay. Um, I will make a motion uh, of intent to award the contract for uh, Hickory Road and William had bought the award for guide rails to William Orr and Sons under the condition of conforming to all requirements within the RFP, including but not limited to bonds, insurance, and requirements. Second. Motion made by Peter, second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Yes. Uh, am I supposed to like, take those old car rails or down the middle? No, really. That's there. I'll take care of it. Okay. Um, next is the Bollinger Road matter. Um, we have an item where we need to authorize a executive holding agreement. Um, the authorization uh, would have to be made to prepare an advertising RFP to remove fill uh, from 341 Hickory Road. Do you want to add to that? So you have two separate motions: a motion to authorize the execution of the loan agreement, and a motion to authorize the uh, preparation of a bid and advertisement thereof um, in the Red Eagle. Told started briefly. The tolling agreement um, was requested by new council for the signs. Uh, it simply allows them to forgo the need to file a recipe to preserve their claims, uh, which they would have otherwise been required to do if they to use to that effect. So the agreement simply preserves their claims as they exist on the first of this year. All the parties hopefully work out a settlement agreement for the extent for whatever reason we can't reach an agreement um, that then the tolling the settlement agreement the calling agreement would terminate. And they're saying um, we start the right one. Right. Okay. I'll make a motion, Lisa, to um, accept or authorize the executive or execute the tolling agreement authorization. Second. Motion made by Peter, second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene, aye. Jesse, aye. Okay. Second motion is to prepare uh, for bid. Um, and our people will have filled from 341 to three rows. And advertise, and advertise. And advertise, thank you. Motion made by Peter. Motion, motion amended. Um, I read second. Second. Motion made by Peter, second by Irene. Or Paul Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. We have the time for weeks. I'm going to say this one, one time, yeah. and I will say it again. We cannot award that bid for the party on the settlement. Okay. No, no award until the settlement agreement is signed. Make a note here. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, next, the equipment and uh, equipment repair. A uh, little truck is set up for August 5th to get the rusting on the floor half area mixed at John Wentz's body shop. The 
This was uh, previously brought to our attention through repair. Uh, it just didn't make its way over there until now. So um, that'll get done. And uh, Jesse, if you would want to talk about the next item, that is the small tractor purchase for the ball field and other smaller uh, municipal work that we can't really effectively do full size John Deere. Sure. Um, so I have four bits here for a subcompact tractor to do part maintenance, do mulching, finishing of the part equipment around. Um, there's one from John Deere here, one from Agritier, which is a massive Ferguson. One from Messix, which is a New Holland, and one from Edling, Edling which is IOV. Um, you read through them, um, it'll give you the base price you put on the back page. I do know that the John Deere, it's not noted, Force Agricare, which there was a little more detailed. The Massey comes with a front quick detach. It's the exact same thing that would be on a skid steer, skid loader, um, which is nice to switch. Things out easier than on the John Deere. You have to get it. Yeah, for dollars. Yeah. That. Um, I have previously looked at coyotes. They're not a bad brand either. Um, and do you have the message? I don't know if I have the message. The message. Okay. Here's the yeah, and the message for the new model, right? Yes. Okay. Versus well, the then gave us a discount though. Agritier, yeah, they gave us a discount of fifty percent. Yeah. So if you look at the Agritier invoice here, yeah. so this was here with the mid deck. This one left more, so it's two separate. Gotcha. I had the price both separate. Gotcha. So you can see it. Okay. The one benefit to the mid mower is to drive over, and it's less room to store. Yeah. But then the advantage to the finish mower is now you've got counterweight for the pump. Yeah. It's a difference of about $900. It's not, that's exactly $900. It's not a crazy, crazy difference there. Um, it's pretty much a wash. Yeah, basically. We got like almost 12500 or so selling the old equipment. So, I mean, we looked at some of the stuff I level work. Um, I didn't find to go with the aperture one. That's that's the one I was going to say. So close. Yeah. And it's the best price. And it comes with a um, quick deep time. Yeah. And you might have the more one. Well, the uh the aggregate one does. The coyote one to have to finish more. Yeah, that's got a 60 and finish on it. And that. Uh, that does not actually. Well, that this only has the loader and the uh, quick net. Can you get it turned off? No, it's not on. And all all the tractors have reach in the morning and draw bar. Now we would have to buy a draw bar. They have the three, bar. but they have the three. And yeah, all number three. Yeah, I I would almost. Toss the John Deere one out. It's more expensive. Yeah, there's less stuff, yeah. and it doesn't even have to the mower finish or otherwise include it in. For part maintenance, you're going to want to put each half. Yeah. So um, I'm thinking Agriture. Yeah. They've always been very good to us. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you want to make a motion? So yeah. Make a motion to purchase the, the Agriture Massey first. The, the three one that he went. Yep. yep. What, the three point or the three point? Well, that, we're talking about finishing all, we're not talking about that. So, I'll make a motion to buy a Massey Ferguson GC 1723EL compact tracker with the uh, three point finishing mower desk for the rear of the tractor. The total will be $17,100. I'll let everybody have it. Motion made by Jesse, seconded by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene, aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Okay. Did they do this? No. No. I can get roll bars for plant bombs. It's a category one. It's not big. And it's just for the ball field. 
Yeah, for just this outright problem with financing. Yeah. We got yeah. money in from something like, essentially old junk. Yeah. <laughs> Sold up the other two. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just money in, money out. Okay, okay. Uh, next is the boom mower. Uh, we need to add safety lights and lettering to this. The title would need to be notarized, and I believe. The general letter that we need to produce to the, uh, the notary has been just completed. So before we leave tonight, we'll all sign that, we'll seal it, and then we'll just guess you just whenever you guess time to go finish that up. One thing I'd like to bring to people's attention is front tires need to be replaced, and the front right tire hits the hydraulics. Can you relocate the lines? It's, it's a hard mount. I would say you get a different offset wheel. Okay. I believe if you have a good view of the and if you move the wheel up, I believe that. And, and the main hydraulics to the boom. Yes. It's leaking, you said, profusely. Yes. And it has the problem, too, with the going in uh, And it's actually not a hydrostat. Yeah. It's a it's a manual gearbox with a shuttle ship. Is that sharing the same hydraulic fluid? Or no. No? Okay, so it's two different, two different problems. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's start by looking at simplest to most complicated here. Let's look at the wheel offset versus the, the hydraulic lines to see what options we have. When I looked at it, the wheel I believe is on the furthest out offset. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's weigh some options there and get a look at the hydraulic to see if it's a simple matter of seal or something. Maybe but it's not gonna be simple. It's a huge, it's a huge, it's a huge cylinder. Okay. It's the biggest okay. one I've seen. Okay. Um, okay, well, I would say, say let's we, we we need to take that out and test it, but I gotta make sure that I'm on road for the yeah. before we do that because so, I'm afraid to actually even so, money because oh, no. we're not spending any money. We need to amend the agenda to add this to your That's on your is it? Yeah. Okay, I missed the clock earlier. Never mind that. Yeah, it's it's uh, uh, number twenty-eight. 28. Yeah, I saw the uh, advertisement. I just skipped past the Jesse and the number of thing. So I forgot I said anything. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll get you out of it for the end of the night. You can work out it. But like I said, I would punch the list what you think the problems are, and then we'll take it and we'll take it out of it or something. Or if it's something you saw locally, then we do. Yeah. I prefer it. Yeah. Yeah. That's clear. No, no, no shade for you. Yeah. Okay, um, Irene, anything you want to add to that? No. Okay. So moving good. Moving <laughs> on to the next side. Uh, we need to approve Jesse to be able to use the credit cards. Uh, that way, any other things that come up, you have the, the spending line to do it, uh, especially if we're going to get getting the title of the email worked out. You're going to need to do that. That is either a situation where he buys it, expenses it, or pays for it, expenses it, or we just get the card and pays for it. So I'll make a motion to approve Jesse Haver to use one of the township issued credit cards. Yeah, you do the same. Uh, second. Motion made by Peter, second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene, aye. Yes, you have the Okay, next is the update to the Salvo and Stormwater Ordinance and its fees. Uh, we will need a resolution for these fees. The resolution will be 2024 12. Ready for that? Uh, Mike, do we have the updates? Yeah, I sent in a uh, fee schedule uh, draft form for review. I need to send it to Colin for okay. response and put, and then once we get comments there, the okay. comments. Okay. So we'll table that as well. No, you can make, you can make a motion. I'll, okay. uh, I'll make a motion to authorize. Kozlov Stouts preparation resolution to update the fees. Thank you. Kozlov Stouts uh, uh, preparation to update the fees. Uh, stormwater ordinances, uh, along with the salvo ordinances, um, pursuant to resolution 2024 12. And I'll second that. Motion made by Peter, second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene, aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Uh, next is 413 Conrad Weiser Parkway. 4315. Uh, 43, I'm sorry. That's a long day. It's uh, 40, 4315 Conrad Weiser Parkway. Uh, this is for the agricultural security area. The property is owned by Justin and Bethany Hurst. Um, 
be adopting the resolution which would enter the first property into ag security. Uh, Attorney McFarland has prepared the necessary resolution, which is 2024 13. Um, I'll make a motion to um, adopt resolution 2024 13, accepting the first property into agricultural security. Second. Motion made by Peter, second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene, I'm Aye. Okay, next, and I'll turn this largely over to the in-person at the uh, emergency phone service offerings that we have. Yeah. Um, there was an informational meeting on Wednesday the 8th to discuss the importance of emergency phone services, and uh, we have the ability to get some push to talk items, which are yes. pretty, pretty neat yes. and pretty helpful thing, along yeah. with potentially some cell phone services. Yeah, and I apologize. I keep on trying to do the website secret to pull the push to talk device yeah. on this first getting out. Um, so the push to talk be $29.99 a month for the township. John wants 16 units. Each of those units is a dollar. Uh, but it would be $29.99 a month so that we can hand out the units to our police department, our fire departments, if need you to school. So if there's an event, you push it, you talk it, you're on your own channel, you don't have to worry about anything. And it gets priority because it's government service. The other part of that is your offered cell phone service. Everyone with the township has been approved to pick up cell phone service. The caveat to that is the cell phones, um, in, order to get, in order to get the discount, have to be purchased through the township. At the prior meeting, we had to purchase, we approved the purchase of three phones. I'd like to increase that to four, if that's okay. Um, but the other part of that conversation was um, the township will have to pay for that service. I'm asking the township if they would feel comfortable, if they would, if I can take advantage of the purchase, and this is what we need you a little bit, take advantage of the purchase of the discount on the phone. What was explained to me is that the contract would have to be with the township for the first six months after that, then I could put the contract on my own. So all of us in my house, with the exception of one person actually qualifies for the first net uh, discount independently of being part of the township. Um, but in order to get the, the essentially the deal on phone purchase, I'd have to have it as a township account for the first six months. I know that it's self-serving in, in, in a, to a certain aspect. Of course, I would be reimbursed to the township for that time. So I'm asking permission from the township. Colin, is there any issues with that? Should we, we avoid doing something, that? Something in writing. Uh, um, I, I, I would not. <laughs> Okay, thank you. We will table that. Yep, yep, I just want to make sure. It's really not an issue, uh, regardless of what the decisions may be, we'll probably be going with first step because of the priority service that you get as a government employee. So um, it's just one of those things that John has really um, uh, done a lot of uh, looking into and need for it. So I think we should, again, it's kind of push to talk um, uh, item. We'll cover a little bit. Um, is the EMC uh, report slide? It is. I'll just add a couple of things at the end. Can you add a note? Yeah. Can you come to the fundraising day? You're asking the council to front you for six months, you and your family. No, 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 no. I would pay the township back. I need you to be silent. Right. Can you help me out? It's, no, no, no. It's not, not, it's, it's not that at all. It's, it's because we're eligible for this through, as a government service. And then I'd be taking the contract back on my own. So, yes. And that's why I'm asking permission. If they say no, then it's no deal. Then I just, it, it's not, they're not paying for it for me. It's I will be paying the township, but it has the contract initially has to be through the township itself. Now, like you guys can out, who's not a loan for me for six months? Well, is at least help. No. And then, oh, I'm going to pay you back, but I'm also going to pay the loan. That's not a It's not a But you can do that. I mean, that's not a yeah. problem. So, this is where we, we, we table yeah. that. Yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll yeah. have the input on that. But she's eligible for it anyway. The only difference is by going to the council. There is some additional things that we have available to us as governmental employees that she I would as a person yeah. purchase. Yeah. yeah. I, I would recommend not taking. No problem. 
Okay, so we'll do no problem. Done and over with. Yes, yeah. Done and over with. Yeah. Um, but we still need to talk to them about the push to talk. Yes, the push to talk. Yeah. So I, I think the push to talks are a good idea. I mean, there's not a limitation on that, whether it's 116 or if there's a high end natural on that, but uh, it's yes, flat feet. Each of the push to talks are just it's that higher. Higher. Yes. Sorry, it's per purchase. Per Purchase so the monthly fee is twenty nine ninety nine a month. Yeah. I need to double check it and see if there's any other fees associated with that. Is that the twenty nine ninety nine a final like that's it, or that there's the, the other the other usual fees associated with any kind of service? So I'm gonna get that firm number talking. Okay, so we'll come back to that. But I I like the idea of a, a, a rapid response or communication mechanism in the, the ambulance services. Yes. That's right. Fire department, yeah. so uh, get the, the figures on that. And we'll yeah, do that. Next. Okay. Uh, next, it is the termination of one of the part-time secretaries. Uh, the board need to ratify the termination of salary bidder effective until uh, June eleventh, twenty twenty-four. Final check issued on June twentieth, twenty twenty-four, in the amount of four hundred and seventy-six dollars thirty-three cents to satisfy any outstanding wages and or time. Uh, Colin, Sir David, you want to add no, nothing else to say? Thank you. Okay, I'll make a motion. Yes. Oh, yes, sorry. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'll, yeah, I'll show that. Yeah. I kind of forgot that, that was not that you all you want to make. And Lisa, I'll second that. Okay, the motion was made by Peter, second by Jesse. Yes. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene, mean, aye. I'm Jesse. Aye. Okay. <laughs> Next is the advertisement for road crew on Indeed. Motion was made at last month's meeting. Um, I don't think we have any changes that are needed. We need to get that out on Indeed if it's not already out there and see if we can't try and attract some additional road crew workers. In. I did print um, what was on Indeed for road crew and the assistant secretary for all of you guys to review. See if there's any changes. Updates or anything, um, especially the full input. It hasn't changed in the last year. Yeah, I've got Melissa and Susan together. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. It's there's a whole general office. You want to review it? Female savings. Okay. Next, I will make a motion to appoint Jesse Hager on the room. I'm saying, yeah, it's a good thing. Motion made by Peter, seconded by Irene. Or Paul Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse and Stace. So we yeah. have bill number 27, the uh, advertising system. It's, it's next. Okay. It's next. Um, yeah, so Jesse, when you're when you want more call like that, just say the same. Um, okay, next is the advertisement for the assistant secretary on Indeed. Uh, we would need to approve the advertisement on this, and based on the fact we no longer have the office coverage that we need to put that advertisement out there. So I will make a motion to put the existing advertisement for secretary on the meeting. Second. Motion made by Peter, second by Irene. Or call um, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Uh, number 28 is to populate the list of duties that are expected of the work crew. So we have that spelled out in black and white. Um, I have not gotten a chance to, to look at that in earnest, in honesty, uh, and it should be part of the employee campaign. There should be a section specifically related to responsibilities, as well as anything else like treasurer, secretary, assistant secretary, so on and so forth. So uh, I will ask everybody's assistance on that one, but I will I will try to it's just, doing that. If Jesse is now a group employee, he cannot be involved. Well, technically all of us are. We are. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say we're we're all there as a kind of like last and, and there is, there is from the Okay. Yeah. okay. You have to go on a slope. Yeah, you, you want to <laughs> Uh, not, I don't, don't have to keep going. <laughs> uh, next is the Berks County Public Works Association. 
Uh, there is a PA1 call and MedEd uh, Utility Worker Safety Program being held on Wednesday, July 17th um, from 9 a.m. to, doesn't actually have an end date, uh, at the Oli Fairgrounds. Registration is open until July 1st and it's $20 a person. We would need to make approvals for people to attend. I'll make a motion authorizing any of the road crew members to attend if they are interested. Second. Motion made by Peter, seconded by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene votes. Aye. Thank you. July 17th. July 17th at 9 a.m. at the Holy Fairgrounds. <laughs> just, just for clarification, yes. I assume uh, Jesse Pay will be the same rate set by the August for the new Right. Yeah, there's one rate set for regular road crew and one rate set for road crew supervisors. And the work group supervisor rate is set by the owners. Right. Okay, next is the Jeremy Trout and Poultry Operation Letter of Credit. Um, this is a request for release of the escrow. Uh, there is still some work that needs to be done yet. Uh, SDG recommends a partial release in the amount of $84,350.91 until any and all deficiencies that have been uh, identified are addressed. So leaves a remaining balance of $10,000 on the escrow. I'll make a motion to authorize the partial release, totaling $84,350.90 against the Jeremy Trout and Poultry Operation Letter. Second. Motion made by Peter, second by Irene. Work call, Peter. Aye. Irene, aye. That's it. Aye. Okay. Next is the comprehensive plan. This is the uh, Berks County comprehensive plan. We received an email from David Hunter, uh, who is their comm director there. He will be attending the WDJZ hearing on July 18th. <laughs> and uh, the county recommends that uh, the township update their plan to be in, within the comprehensive plan so that it becomes joint. There is grant money available. So I think there's going to be an informational meeting or maybe a lunch yeah. sort of thing sometime in the near future. I don't recall what the date is. Like it's like every 10 years. It's every 10 years. Or so. Yeah. Um, so I think we should definitely go to that. I know some of the other people in the joint planning were kind of hot and powerful on it because it's, it's not generally what fits for us out in this neck of the woods. But it's should have a county website. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can go look at it, but I think the reason some of the other municipalities haven't participated is because of the stark differences. Oh, I think you're, you're involved on all of that. Stop me if I'm misrepresenting anything, but there was uh, not a lot of interest based on differences in what's in the first county conference versus what's in everybody else's. I got that. I got that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next is the computer stuff. I did talk to Mike. Quality. Yeah. Um, they sent over the uh, laptop quote, so we have an actual one item quote for the laptop. We, we can read in the portal there. We previously authorized the purchase of prior meetings, so there's an additional act required there. Um, I did talk to him about the admin password on here because that, okay. that really sandbagged me when I tried to install Office for you guys the other day. Um, he's going to get whoever worked on that to send that over to me so I know what it is. Um, but then I'm going to be working with one of their engineers on uh, some of our licensing stuff. So our Microsoft license actually already entitles us to each one of those five licenses out of the mailbox okay. with up to 50 gigs on it, a one terabyte slice of one drive space, Teams, and web access to the uh, the apps. When does it expire? Uh, it's an okay. Is the license that we currently have less or more expensive than what my less less. 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 Okay. So we're we're specifically tailored to that. And what we're going to use is the OneDrive. Back. So okay. the other thing we have SharePoint as well. Okay. Yeah. So the individual computers will be backed up to OneDrive. So what will happen is documents, downloads, all the, the core user directory holders automatically sync one. That's the same situation that we have where I work. All of your stuff, all your laptops synced up to cloud. Beyond that, with SharePoint, all I have to do is I, I got to get the MFA token from you. 
uh, suits that I can sign in on a KYC and a KYC. Um, you can store things to SharePoint, and it's, it's a very simple thing. It's actually it's very nice, very easy to run with. Very nice. He edits something. Yeah. Yeah. We can edit it. I can see it's a lot. Yeah, so I'm take the data back up by the only thing that's because the computer's already So we will have endpoint storage. Does that include the emails? Because your emails never actually be served. So if you sign in on a completely different computer, you would get all of the items in your mailbox. That's a, a, a point to point delivery okay. is a very antiquated method of email. Okay. Okay. Um, so do we need the email spam protection? That is up to you guys. That you said you get a ton of spam. So that's uh, still on the table. Okay. So, okay. so let's do that. Yes. So um and we're gonna have some additional discussion about the computer because I I think we can get further on these for the time being without being on Windows 11. Microsoft is still pushing that data out. I think it's part of the, the products that Solvent T offers us. Yeah. He said it will require Windows 11. And I don't want to screw up our content yeah. for Solvent T. I want to talk to the engineer. Okay. Okay. But that's in the works. But the all the other stuff, we already have the stuff in place. We just got to get it kind of lined up. Okay. Um, the, the bit that I had to bring up in the comments is let's pull the trigger on going Microsoft Teams for once. So okay. we'll advertise, yes. I'll get the stuff in place that will be kind of really fun in August that we let people know on Zoom. In July, we got code meetings going currently. Shoot the Zoom would have a redirect over to we're now on Teams, go here. Um, and then We'll start using Teams as the and the our email now. would change oh, then. Yes, yeah. our, our email's going to change. No. Okay, so so no, 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 oh, you mean the Comcast? Yeah, one. the Comcast one is still there. So at some point, what I'm going to do is get yeah. that that is essentially a repeater. Anything that comes to Comcast is over, but there will be an office at Marion Township for Marion TWD works on. Our Microsoft account, and then we have four other spots that we can do on three of us. Part of the problem is getting away from the Comcast with the emails because, like, a lot of stuff winds up in spam. Yeah. So, if we need to change the email address, I think that might be something that's I, so you're not actually changing, you're actually running two things at the same time. Uh, I won't, you know, that's all I'll explain it. Okay, but so, so for right now, the only thing that we're really going to go ahead and just read that is this is this. The answer is Well, all right. So the laptop purchase is now, it's it's, all, it's already completed. So please, uh, and if you just, just let me know if you find an email that's specific to the laptop purchase that's, that's separate from all the other options. Okay, that I acknowledge mm -hmm. that was my pen. Yeah, it's that kind of, you know, saying, uh, um, it's that order. Okay, and that's, 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 that's fine. That's fine. So then the only motion that we need to make then is to, uh, for the email, the spam protection at $2.50 $2 each for $10 a month. Yeah, so right now we only have the, we technically only have the one email address that we're actually using. Right. So that'll be Two dollars and fifty cents a month, and then I'll go up to eight bucks. And so, and Microsoft is on all the terminals right now. So everything one of the Office PCs has Microsoft Office. The only one that didn't is this one. You're like you can just use Google. So when I went to do the take the online meeting, I got gotcha. gotcha. all that. Gotcha. 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 So do we need to motion on the scan protection? Yes, okay. if you're going to make that purchase, we need to make that. Motion. Okay. So I guess I'll make motions to the uh, spam detection at two dollars and fifty cents each, which may to a little total of ten dollars with seven. I'll second. Okay. Um, motion made by Irene, second by Peter. Bill Paul here. Aye. Marie, aye. Yeah, aye. Okay. Uh, next is the Berks County Cable Consortium. Uh, we have received an email about participating in this, but it was an error. We could not receive that because yeah. uh, we are 
party in the process of approval through uh, the Cohen Law Group or the independent agreement. Um, we are still waiting for the final signing documents from Comcast about that. Uh, and then the final item on the agenda is the emergency management coordinator report. So I will turn that over to you. Um, John, John didn't really have anything. Um, I just want to make mention he was really on the word with the high winds yesterday. Uh, we There was a warning to the whole sort of area about the high winds, and some areas exceeded 100 miles an hour. Yeah. So there was these straight line events, and it's constantly like in the whole time. Um, and so uh, so he's he's preparing for that, uh, but again, the weather's becoming more and more severe, and he just wants to have everything ready to mobilize people if we need to go that route. The other thing, as an aside, he put out some literature that he received from the state on two of the chairs in the front. He's asking, he you know, if he could purchase us from the table, or if we have something just to put. Yeah. If anyone has like an old piece of furniture or something that would fit out there. Um, just use as, as a small table for deciding and think about today. Yeah, perhaps, yeah. yeah, yeah, just just something that he could put the materials on instead of it sitting on chairs for him. Now. He just received um, a bunch of literature. I suppose we could even go to like a, a Salvation Army. Right. And, people, yeah, people give stuff away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have no doubt yeah. we can find something. Yeah, great. just put out there. Yeah. I'm <laughs> I mean, the other, the other thing maybe to bring up would be the trench rescue classes. The trench rescue class, I forgot the date that was the initial one was held. Um, it was, it was, the, it was, it was, it was, the trench was the day, yeah, okay, so last Saturday. Um, very successful, despite the fact it has been the hottest day of the year so far. Um, everyone turned out, um, and then there's going to be another session held in July. I'll repeat, well, um, July 13th, and that was at uh, the, the location. Um, so if anyone wants to go see Green Acres Lawn Care, thank you, Jesse. Um, if anyone wants to go, they, I believe they started at 9 o'clock in the morning, Green Acres Lawn Care on July 13th. You could stand by and watch to see what they're doing as far as the trend rescue class. Again, this is important because we will be digging. I know people always say trench, like big, deep hole, but 24 inches is considered a trench. Um, so, and we probably will be digging at that step. And he just wants everyone prepared. Uh, we had some of the guys from Marion Township come out for just in this class. So, very good. They had a, a, multiple agencies that participated. Good. <clears throat> yeah. um, yes, Jeff. Before you wrap, yes. Another Main Street, um, free wrap up because I wasn't here because I was at work when you were going over half the time. Is there another meeting coming up regarding that? At this point, we don't have anything scheduled. So we're in kind of a, a midpoint where we did some of the initial surveying, and then there's going to be a little bit of additional, um, I'll say paperwork exercises that have to go all around that. Let's see the really early stage design that we can then turn in and try to get more grant funding for. So we don't have any really major milestones coming up for the, in advance of one of those, we will be looking at a town. So I just want to ask you a few questions and I wasn't here and sure. the figuring into this. So at this moment, we can't pull the plan back, correct? If we pull the plan, we will get five, sued, or both. You go to two. Yeah. Anyway. My next question is, what's included in the pricing plan, or do you not have that knowledge yet? Off the top of my head, it is the construction of the actual system itself. Um, the stated cost does not include the hookup on the lateral or the deconstruction of the system at your home. So everything that happens on our property, we're paying for? Essentially. The goal here is to minimize that, and also there are grant opportunities for, for that. Hold on. Now, so, I looked at yeah. Invest at the night you said about Invest. Yeah. Me. Unfortunately, I'm going to be very low income and low income, which means we can't get this. So there are other things other than yeah. Invest. That was just an example. Yeah. So there are there are other opportunities. One of the things that we have to do as a board is look at the whole picture. So one of the things that we are going to be bringing into the equation as we get to that stage is the, the kind of the total cost of ownership. 
total impact to the resident. We're not going to look at one little slice and say, oh, well, this is this is the low enough thing, but it's actually still going to play around another eight to ten or twelve thousand um, dollars. We realize that that doesn't exist in the vacuum, but on that same token, the state is only looking at one piece. So we need to, to focus on that, but also kind of keep that in the periphery. It's it's believe me, it's not out of play down the line. It's um oh, I, it's there, focusing. Yeah, that. it's it's focusing on thing that we have to do for the moment. That's many, many stages down the road. And we're we're focusing on this little slice in the front right now. And I think that the, like I said, I went on and yeah. asked, and I'm like, low income is sixty-four thousand dollars a year. Moderate is ten thousand. Well, oh my God, we don't make that. We never did. We never will. Unfortunately, we're never going to, you know, meet the criteria to be very low income, but we're never going to have the money to be moderate either. Yeah. So that's why my workers like, you know, how do you expect me to get a grant if we can't even? Yes. The there's there's other there's other opportunities. So that's something yeah. that we would be yeah. supporting. Sarah has been keeping the of stuff. And as more and more information comes up, we'll be able to post more information on our website as well. So, and again, this is not happening today or next year, probably in the next five years. And so many things change. So, you know, try to the people that are listening online. I want them to understand, you know, yeah, you want, we're all against this. We are. Mm -hmm. But obviously, if you're saying we can't pull out of it, it's coming at some point in time, it's going to happen. So your choices are face it and hope you can get the money to grant the student for a move out of town. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's not that simply put. I know a lot of people are angry about the plan being in place. And again, that was something that was on before I was on board. And then I was on the board and you posted. Right. So I thought we were so right. And so so. If we were to pull the plan, number one, we would be all facing sanctions at, at this point, contempt. And there are cases where supervisors have been put in jail for doing such things. So let's say that's worst case scenario. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but, but they have been put dead in jail. Um, but if we were to pull the plan, we still have to put something in place. So it's back to the drawing board. Let's say if they need one, so it's back to the drawing board, the whole design the the advertising meetings etc cetera, etc cetera. so that's a plus they can they can find us daily and the minimum fine is three hundred dollars a day um really yeah, so, yeah. so, 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 so it, it, it's following yeah, i know yeah. that's right and they yeah. have one so just asking a few questions you um, at this point, we can't give anybody actual figures how much you're going to pay. We have rough all parts, but that's it. We are so far, again, exactly. five to eight years off. Of we're not we're screening for the car. So we're, right. we're, we're knowing that we probably need to get a car for your analogy, and we know roughly what it's going to look like, but we're still, we're still window shopping. Okay, and quarterly sewage fees. Yeah, so that, that's going to potentially come down. How is it going to be prorated now? Everybody going to pay the same thing? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you meant the, uh, the online inspection. So okay. the, the quarterly sewage fees, again, this is a thing that's, I'll say, sort of still nebulous in nature. Um, this would be a situation, and again, I'll maybe refer to the end here on this one, where Global Store, we, we buy a certain number of PDUs from them, and they bill us based on the number of PDUs that we have. So if we know that we have 200 EDUs in the township, Township is built for 200 EDUs and US property. And if you have a property that's one EDU, you get built for one EDU. You get a property that's two EDUs, you get built for two EDUs. I have 2,000, but it's one EDU. There's a, but there's like many houses in this town that vacant. Yeah. And rent is a lot. I found out. Yeah. So whoever owns the property still has to pay that. Whether it's vacant or not vacant, it's the same thing as paying your taxes. All right. Just ask one more question here. I understand you're still against this whole project, right? I, I don't like it, but I understand the uh, feel the bear traps that we have to tiptoe through. Right. So I understand your position. Totally get it. With that, I want to end this in. I'm going to read it to you real quick. Mm -hmm. I went around and pulled everybody in this township that's in the affected area. Slider is the this letter and the attachment to the petition in regards to the ongoing act by the reason, you know, Once again, 
Community tax for citizens, our affected area will be, it will be deserved to be heard regarding this plan. Um, eyes are getting crazy to the one called that. We need to thank the residents and Mary and Senate Council are voicing our feelings, we've voiced our feelings in previous years to current council to write again multiple times to the previous ones who this plan in place and it's not new here because you were not into this and we wish we were uh, against it. However, I think our requirements were dismissed when we have a $5 million plan, now up to a $11 million plan for no pressure. I'm just kind of skimming through it here. So we feel that with this plan, we feel this plan, that this plan without 100% grant money We'll call many hardships needing possible work with the law. First, we draw to some of our long time standing owners in the community. Due to the fact that our, our long time standing people are on fixed income score, as I found out, I mean, they're very, almost very low income front. Um, so, so, what we what we did here is sign a petition stating, and there's like six pages I did. Every street that's on your main Idris Canal, Sheridan, even came down Shady Cabins. All the people that are against paying for the project have signed this. They're letting you know that if you don't get 100%, they're not going to pay. I'm not going to pay. I don't have the money to pay for this. I'm trying to get out of the hardships. I have a lot of hardships to deal with at my house right now. They got the money to pay. So it's going to come down to us either walking away from our house or whatever you guys want to do to put, you know, put us out because we ain't got the money. The, the intent here is not put anybody out of house. Well, that's but where I'm at. I, I want to <laughs> make this clear. We'll be chasing every possible avenue of grants. But to be an absolute realist here, 100% is probably not going to happen. Well, then I probably won't be a resident in this township forever. That's unfortunate, but we will come to a point where, and this is again, I mentioned earlier, there's time and a place to challenge that. If you don't get enough grant money, where well, this it comes, is going to help you to get your it will, it will actually, uh, As a segue, there is a form here that you can take if you want to modify it. Please feel free where you can express your discontent about the plan. Uh, you yeah. know what? I really don't have, sorry, you got me. I don't have any intent to try and reach out to any senators or anybody no. else because somebody or yeah. somebody in our township has already tried and been to a We don't have time for you. You don't have to reach out to anybody. It's a letter to us that you say, like, I'm not for this. But this again, it, the state doesn't do petitions. It's like we can supply that over to the DEP, but they're going to look at it and go, yeah. okay, cool. These, when we have letters from people saying, like, look, I can't afford this. I'm low to very low income. It's a huge hardship, blah, 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 blah. I am in favor of trying to get grants. And if they can't get enough grants, this is going to be an absolute disaster for our community. We'll grab one of those and give that to us because if we have a reading of, of those things that thick, it speaks volumes to our grant request. Well, this is basically the same thing. Uh, I, I know. I know. Because, you know what? If you ask to do this, you get 100% uh, financing. Uh, uh, it, unfortunately, the format isn't. If I make sense, I've dealt with DEP many, many years. If you don't supply something in the format they're looking for, they yeah, literally it's throw it out. They don't. Right? Yeah, they need on the chair just the wrong way. So, plus, I certainly appreciate the, the, the gravity of the situation and the situation together. If it's not something DEP is used to looking at, they have an intern that's going to go through there and just throw it. It, it really does happen, like you said, it has to be in the form they supply, and it's got it over there to, to put those together. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. it's we, we will absolutely take it, we will add it to our file. Believe me, that when people say that they voice the, the opinion, it's not falling on deaf ears. It's there are certain things that we can and cannot do, and it's certain things that if we do it, result in a very bad time for everybody like that. So, uh, Yes, yes. So I think they're those two are the same. Yeah, yeah. So that is uh, this is actually I think that this one is residents living. You can actually be outside of the township for this one, or inside the township. And then there was uh, basically uh, DEP saying 
The putting this in, here's the bill. Yeah. That's but the other. This is, this is where yeah. that yeah. would be worthwhile. Yeah. Of yeah. course. Well, this is my last straw. I'm yeah. sorry. I can't, yeah. I'm just going to keep the house up for sale eventually. I'll build this out, but if it doesn't get to, we'll get 100%. I'm going to be out of this. So, no, no, no. anyway, I got to run. want to go home and yep. change. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Um, okay, I'm finding a police report because that is the last item on the agenda. Yeah. Executive session after this. You have it. Thank you. I just had to scroll the PDF to get to it. Um, 30, so, 30 second executive session. Yeah, 30 second executive session. Yes. Okay. Not, cool. not a second war. <laughs> Alan has spoken. Um, relatively quiet month. Uh, looks like there was 13 citations issued, nine traffic stops. And uh, four traffic no DUIs. Um, I don't have any comments other than we'll need to pick out some dates for the uh, HOA follow up. We have a little stone crop situation. Jesse, do you have any comments? Um, no, only um, one thing we're going to have to get in front of here for buying these factories. We want to up front tell them we need a title. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. All as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just in case, if we ever decide to drive on the road, better be legal about it. Um, okay. Uh, I read Any crew? No comments. All? No. Micah? No. Lisa? No. Okay. We're going to go into executive session right now. So thank you, everybody, for coming out. Have a good one and stay cool, please. Again. Uh, Right. Okay. Uh, we, after going into an executive session about some personnel matters, some possible litigation matters, and some matters pertaining to uh, some ongoing things within the township. Uh, uh, anything that I need to specifically say on that, Colin? Yeah. Okay. The last matter of concern. Agency business, which if conducted in public, would violate a lawful privilege or lead to, to the disclosure of information of confidentiality okay. protected by law. Yeah, we, we discussed uh, under privilege a matter that is related to an ongoing investigation and discussing in public would be a violation of law. Um, Okay, at this time, I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 9.32 p.m. I'll second. Motion made by Peter, second by Irene. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene, aye. Jesse, aye. Okay, thanks, Gary. Have a good one.